from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of SUSECON Digital. Brought to you by SUSE. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of SUSECON Digital 20. Happy to welcome to the program Vicente Maranta, who is the Vice President of Offer Management of Enterprise Linux Workloads on Power. Vicente, pleasure to see you, thanks for joining us. Hey Stu, thank you for having me. All right, so we know that SUSE uh, you know, lives on a lot of platforms. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about applications specifically, uh, primarily SAP. Uh, give us a little bit, Vicente, about you know, what you're working on and the relevance to the partnership with SUSE. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I've, for the last five years, I've been responsible for, uh, for offering management at IBM, focused on solutions that live on IBM power systems, in particular, uh, we started with SAP HANA and obviously SAP and SUSE with their fantastic relationship kind of was, was a big part of, uh, of, of that and continues to be as we, we have grown the platform for the last five years. Excellent. So yeah, I mean, SAP, of course, you know, critical workload, we've been seeing SAP go through those information. Uh, so help us understand, you know, what, what work needs to be done uh, to, to integrate these things, make sure uh, that you know companies can run their business. Yeah, I think the uh, um, you know primarily as as clients are going to they're making their transition of transition from a traditional type of an ERP CRM uh, and, and even BW type of workloads, they're looking for for uh, a way to to make those transitions really get into the whole digital transformation and and all of the spaces uh, of being able to leverage technology in a way that creates value for the client in almost real time um, but you know they want to do it with with uh, technology partners that are are going to enable the client to do it with minimal risk with high flexibility and with partners that are there for them to kind of in some cases, do things that are not necessarily all, you know, um, supported or, or ready to go yet, but but really um, giving the customer the the ability to adapt to things. And uh, when we started with SAP HANA, as I mentioned, um, you know, the customers in the in the market uh, who were doing HANA on x86 platforms were limited to certain certain set of capabilities, certain set of, of support statements and things like that. And a big part of that was bare metal uh, uh, implementations, which still to this day kind of remain the most popular way to deploy HANA in an x86 environment. Um, but when we got together with SUSE and with SAP and, and, and we started the partnership around HANA, the, the thing that became very clear was that customers needed flexibility. They needed to be able to 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 adapt to you know changing environments, changing you know very uh, interesting uh, challenges that they were trying to tackle with with these Hana projects. But the you know the the capabilities of the of the servers that they were using were not allowing them to have that flexibility. And then you know. Even if SUSE was trying to do certain things and and give some flexibility to those clients, if the if the infrastructure cannot handle it or vice versa, it it it's really just kind of a one party uh, one party trick and and it doesn't work. So the focus with uh, SUSE almost from the beginning has been on on co innovation, and you know we've been able to accomplish really amazing things together with them and SAP. Things that um, you know just could not have been possible. Uh, without that that very strong collaboration, and and one of them that is very recent is shared processor pools, right? In a in a world where Hana is deployed bare metal systems, Power uh, IBM Power is is always doing virtualization, and together with uh, SUSE, we were able to come up with a solution and with SAP, obviously, um, that allowed customers to share cores in a virtual way across many Hana instances. So completely revolutionizing the TCO and, and the ROI for, for clients who are doing HANA without trading off any of the resiliency, any of the performance and, and everything else. So that's that's the, the balance I think that a lot of these customers are looking for is flexibility and better returns, especially now more than ever, uh, without trading off all of the things that, that they need for an S4 HANA project or an ERP or, or a, a BW project. 
Yeah, you, you talked about the, the flexibility and the returns that the customers get on this. I wonder if you step back for a second, you know, you know, where is this hitting on a CIO's priority list? You know, what has changed in today's, you know, cloud era? Uh, you know, a couple, couple weeks ago, uh, you know, I, IBM Think was going on, you know, heard a lot about customers, how they're going through their journey in the cloud. Uh, we know there's a lot of options yeah. there, so, uh, you know, SAP solutions specifically, there, there's a lot of ways that we can do this. So how, how does a CIO, you know, figure out, you know, what, what's the best solution for uh, their skill set uh, and the, the technology partners that they work with? Yeah, I, I think at a, at a high level, the, what the CIOs are, are facing nowadays is, is kind of, um, it, it's a good time to be a CIO, I think, because you you get a chance to to have a broad range of deployment options without having to trade off on the features. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure uh, some CIOs will will disagree and will say there's plenty of other challenges that are making their life complicated. But if if we just focus on, you know, the fact that you can you can deploy Hana. You can deploy it in the cloud. You can deploy it in hybrid modes. You can deploy it on premises, and and to large extent, and especially with our capabilities, and and together with Suse, the, the CIO doesn't have to make a choice on on trade off of things that they have to uh, lose if if they make one or the other. I think that is uh, that is, you know, what helps them to feel comfortable about going to SAP and being able to adapt. If a project becomes too large or the, the, the data transfer requirements become too complicated or too expensive, it's easy enough to bring it back and, and to maybe leave dev test in a, in a cloud or uh, and move the rest of, uh, of the production environment to, to on-premises. But the, you know, through, through a number of partnerships that we have done over the last uh, few years, there's, there's a number of uh, very large uh, MSPs and CSPs, including um, uh, SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud, HEC, and uh, and very soon IBM Cloud as well, who can provide all of these capabilities that SUSE and IB and uh, Empower allow for uh, for uh, a HANA deployment to be done in a cloud. So from our perspective, even though I'm a hardware guy, and and some people may think I I only care about on-premises business, the reality is, you know, when a customer says or a CIO, as you as you were asking when a CIO is trying to make a decision, we don't want that CIO to be thinking they have to make a decision between uh, IBM supporting them only if it's on premises or only if it's on cloud, we can do both and they don't have to do, you know, it, it's not a hard trade off to decide you can start with one, you can go to the other one. We can have capacity for them like we're doing with SAP Hack today, uh, uh, SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud. They're using Power9 technology. The customer is benefiting regardless of, of which deployment option they can they choose, both with SUSE underneath it. So it's it's I think we're trying to make it simpler for them to to make those choices without infrastructure becoming uh becoming the the sticky point. Yeah, and you talked about the the support that users can get, of course, from IBM. Uh at SUSECon, a lot of discussion about the community there. So, uh, you know, what, what, what can you tell us about, you know, I mean, you've got thousands of customers uh, that yeah. are running, you know, SAP HANA on, on power. Uh, how do you help them rally together and be, be part of it? Yeah, so, uh, so you know, uh, you and I have known each other for, for a while and, and uh, I think when we started uh, working together uh, at a prior company, it was around uh, community practice and, uh, and, and the organizational network and social network. Um, a big part of what we have done is just kind of go into that that same approach of, of just connecting connecting people with people, right? Connecting uh, people from SUSE with people with from IBM with clients and and trying to foster valuable interaction between those clients, whether it's at TechU, IBM TechU uh, conferences, SAP TechEd, uh, SUSECon, uh, you know, you name it. We kind of we're always kind of looking for ways to to bring people together and and you know I'll I'll put in a plug for for a a, a client uh, entity a, a client council called the SAP Power Customer Council which is 
you know, a group of clients that decided on their own to get together and, uh, and, and bring, bring, um, you know, bring other customers who are doing SAP deployments on AIX, on Linux, uh, obviously with, with Suse and Hana and come together once a year. We, we also kind of have, uh, almost monthly interlock and, and, and workshops with them. But that is one way where the SUSE folk, IBM Power, SAP development all come together with a whole bunch of clients, and they're giving us uh, they're giving us in, uh, kind of um, feedback, but also identifying things for us to work on next. Uh, from a support perspective, it, you know, it, it as you said, we have uh, thousands of clients nowadays, and. The, the really fantastic thing has been very few issues and the issues that we have had, SUSE, SAP and IBM, all, all three of us together have been able to resolve them to, uh, to the customer's satisfaction. So, it, you know, it just kind of demonstrates that, um, you know, regardless of, you know, where something is invented, SUSE with SLES, SAP with HANA, us with our hardware and our hypervisors, we, when it comes to the clients, we all work very closely together uh, their success. Great. You know, those feedback loops are so critically important to everyone involved. Uh, I guess last thing, uh, maybe if, if you've got a, you know, a customer example uh, that might highlight uh, the, the partnership uh, between IBM and SUSE. Yeah, th there's a number of them and, and we have, uh, I, I think it's over 60 uh, public references together with, uh, with SUSE of, of clients who are, are doing SAP HANA uh, with, uh, with SUSE on power. Um, but a couple of that come come to mind. Uh, obviously, Robert Bosch is is a fantastic client for all of us, a fantastic partner, um, and they've they've been with us almost from the very beginning, together with Suse and together with us. And they they helped us to identify early on some things that they would like to be able to to see supported, some capabilities that they expected to be able to have, especially given uh, that Bosch had had a strong uh, knowledge of IBM technology, IBM product, and they wanted to be able to apply some of the same uh, same capabilities around life partition mobility and and large size uh, LPARs for for Hana and things like that. And they they worked very closely with SUSE and with us and with SAP to to not just give us the requirement, but really help us to identify. Okay, you know. How should this work, right? It's not just uh, creating the technology and 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 adding one more, more feature, but how do we integrate it? How do we integrate it into Bosch, who who had created a fantastic um, provisioning, self provisioning type of a portal for all of their uh, all of their clients, all all of their internal entities uh, around the world. Um, that was really cool, and it, it really kind of helped us to highlight how. We could integrate into into uh, tools, monitoring, reporting, etc. That uh, that our clients have. Another example, if uh, if I can, is uh, Richmond. Richmond International is um, based in Geneva, luxury brand. And um, Helge Tautorad, who was the director of IT at the time, kind of came to uh, to me and and gave me a challenge. He said, "Look, I I love I love Hana Power." I, I love that we can do all of these things with it, but I really would like to be able to share processors across multiple HANA instances. That would really reduce the, the bill. It would really reduce the cost. And we would, you know, Richmond uh, would be able to achieve a much quicker return on investment than, uh, than we had anticipated. So he gave us the challenge. But the challenge went to, to everybody, it went to SUSE, to us, and to uh, SAP. We, we all got together. And again, with with Helge uh, being the uh, the executive sponsor on the client side, he really kind of worked with all of us, brought us together, and it was an art of the possible type of uh, situation that now is generally available to all clients. And it is thanks to uh, to Helge, thanks to Richmond, who uh, who kind of brought us together and and gave us that challenge. Excellent. Well, Vicente Marata, great to catch up with you. Thanks so much for sharing yeah. the updates on iPower and partnership. Thanks, Sue. All right, we'll be back with more coverage from SUSECON Digital 20. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.